Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a wrap up video. These are all the books that I've read since my last wrap up. A lot of these books are from my last TBR video, so my TBR jar prompt thing that I do. And so you guys are going to find out what I thought about those books. And there's a couple books on here that you guys probably haven't heard of or heard me talk about yet. So, so let's go ahead and just start with the first book that I read since my last one, which was... A mistake. So I read Pillow Thoughts by Courtney Peppernell. So this is a like modern poetry collection and I found this at Goodwill actually. And this one was a two-star read. This is literally like I was literally laughing. I really 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 annotated this. So in the front I wrote annotation number one and then I said where I'm from and the date and then I said annotate this more and pass it on. So I'm actually going to put this in my little library in my neighborhood and I want this to just like get passed around and I want people to annotate it like crazy because I wrote so many thoughts in here of like what I thought was stupid, what I thought was like okay. I don't want to be too mean because I don't think that's necessary but all I'm gonna say is sometimes I'm like how do certain books like get published? Like how does one author get so much recognition or get like this really popular poetry collection and you're just like you don't really understand like how it happens and I'm wondering if it's like a nepotism type of thing I don't know it's just like that typical modern poetry that makes you kind of like roll your eyes because it feels like the same thing over and over and over and over and over again and it's about all of her past like relationships and like how toxic they were but it's just like the same thing over and over and over again and I cannot stand repetitive poetry I just feel like people get really really lazy and they just start writing the same things with the same words and I found contradictions like she'll say one thing in one place and then another poem will say something else and I go up oh, page 12 that's not what you said then <laughs> I don't know it's just one of those poetry collections where you're like oh that kind of sounds like something I would have written when I was in like high school or middle school you know where you think you're being really profound and then you go back and like reread it as like your older self and you're like wow I was really really searching for a word that rhymed right there. <laughs> Wasn't into it. So I'm gonna pass this along. I gave it two stars. So the next book that I read was Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. And this book was different than what I expected. One thing that I can say is if you've played any video games at all in your life, like I'm not a gamer now so much, like I'll play like Animal Crossing and stuff, but like um, I'm not like a gamer now, but in my childhood I loved video games and this has a lot of like nostalgic video game talk to it. So if you've ever played like any video games ever, I think that you're going to find this pretty interesting. But if you literally have like zero care in the world about video games, then you may kind of find this boring because I do feel like just because I had some video game nostalgia elements in my life, I did find this a bit more interesting. One thing that I find that I really really love in books too is when people in the books are super 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 passionate about their creative endeavors. Like they know all the ins and outs of this one thing that they love and this book really had that in it where you could tell the people that were creating these video games in this book like it really shows how much thought that they put into what they were doing and that like every single thing that they did had a point and a purpose and a meaning and they just wanted it to be so good and I absolutely love seeing that passion in characters in books and these characters definitely have that and I really really loved it and it made me really interested in the video game topic itself. But the thing about this book that bugged me and the reason why I wasn't as big of a fan of it as some people were is because there's not like this overarching conflict in the story. There's really not really like that main arc to the story. This book is very much just about a relationship like these two people and they're it's a boy and a girl and they're friends and they were friends when they were younger and they end up kind of meeting up in adulthood and then they kind of start this video game business and it's kind of like about the video games that they create and their, you know, problems and their push-pull type of relationship. And it's just kind of like the progress of this video game company and this relationship between these two people. But there's no overarching conflict. There's nothing you're trying to figure out. There's nothing you're trying to learn by the end. It's There's no mystery or intrigue to the main conflict. What I explained in my Goodreads 
review was that this book feels kind of like a soap opera. Like it could just keep going and keep going and like there's a whole bunch of little conflicts all throughout. Now personally I'm not a huge fan of that style of writing. I really like to have a purpose to my reading. Like I like to know that there's something that I'm trying to figure out or know or understand and then the end I'm gonna get that resolve sort of. I really really prefer that in my books and it's rare when I read a book like this that doesn't really have that. And I just kind of realized it's not really my cup of tea. So if you kind of like those stories that are just character driven, there's not really a conflict, it's just kind of like they're kind of living their life type of thing, this book is really going to be for you. And if you're a huge gamer, you might really like this as well. I honestly think this is one of those books that I almost feel like I might like better in like a TV show or a movie format. So this book I gave three stars. It wasn't like everything. It wasn't bad, but I'm definitely glad that I listened to it on audio. I just don't know if I would have been able to get through this book if I would have read it physically. I think I would have found it more boring if I would have read it physically. So so the next book I read was a book I was really excited to read because it felt like a, like, not genre, but like a trope, I guess, that I would really, really like. And I still feel like I would really like this trope. I just don't feel like it, this particular one was like a winner for me. And her name is Katie Wismer, and she came out with this book called Broken Perfect Lies pretty recently. So she marketed it as like a, My or not Miley Cyrus, um, Hannah Montana type of retelling, I guess, where she's kind of living a double life. She doesn't want people to know who she is in real life. She really wants to live kind of under the radar, but she is like this really famous pop star. And she like wears wigs and everything. Like nobody knows who she is in real life because she just doesn't want that out there. Well, things start coming out and people start figuring out who she is and so she has to get this new bodyguard and so she hires this bodyguard um, I think his name is Heath and he starts kind of like helping her and protecting her and all of this stuff and then there's like this weird stalker guy that's like stalking her and yeah I really thought that I would like this protector like bodyguard trope and I still feel like I will this one just did not hit the mark for me this one was two stars sadly so honestly this book I just got a little bored in which is interesting because it is kind of a thriller like it reads like a thriller but I wasn't that invested in it I don't know I just felt like I had to suspend my disbelief a lot with this book I kept asking myself like why is this happening like how is this happening there's a lot of like plot holes to where I was just like wait how like what I don't understand and there's one thing that really bothers me in romance books and I just wish authors wouldn't do this and I don't know if they're doing it to like create tension or to like make you like want to see more of the couple but sometimes it's done really poorly and that's when authors how do i put this when the author tries to create tension or they they create want in the reader like i want to see these characters interact like i want to see this character like help her but like they're creating that want by not giving you what you want and it's fine occasionally but if it's in like a romance i don't want to see it all the time and this book was horrible about it. So every single time like she would get hurt or something would happen or she would be in danger, you know, you would think that Heath, the guy that she hired, the romantic love interest, would be the one to help her or to like be there for her, to protect her, but it was always somebody else. It was either her manager or her agent or her dad or her ex-boyfriend even that kept kind of like jumping into these scenes where you're like, that's where you should have put the love interest. Like he should have come to do that. He should have picked her up. He should have done this. He should have done that. And he never was the person that did those things. But it was so overdone that I started getting frustrated and it made it so I didn't care about the characters. I didn't care about their relationship. And the end was like the absolute nail in the coffin for me because the main love interest in like the big big suspense scene where you want to see them together he wasn't even there somebody else was and I'm not even gonna say who it was because it literally irks me so bad because I'm like what the heck why so this book two stars sadly I've read her marionette series and I really liked it I gave her marionette series I think the first one four stars the second one four stars I believe so the marionette series was good and I liked it but this one it just didn't hit the mark for me so the next book I read was an audiobook and this was in my TBR prompt jar video and it was Yonmi Park's In Order to Live I think is what it's called this book five stars like this is a gold star read for me I've had two gold stars this year and this was one of them like oh my god I love this book it was so good if you like memoirs this is a must read I talked about this a little bit in my memoir video and this is one of those books that just like hit you and you're just like it blows your mind like I thought about this book 
for like weeks on end. I was telling Travis about all of the stuff that I was like learning and like it was insane. And you know when I read um, Good Morning Monster and I was obsessed with that book, this book did the exact same thing to me where it makes you feel so grateful for your life that you live and it makes you realize like how strong people can be. That's exactly what Good Morning Monster did to me. It just makes you feel so grateful for your life. And I think with this book, I felt so grateful for where I live and where I was born. This book is very much stranger than fiction. Like when you're reading it, you're like, how much crap can one person go through? It's insane. And it really shows people's perseverance. And it's just so inspiring, so motivating. And I loved it, loved it. If you want to read a really good, just like motivational, inspirational read, this is the one you want to read. So the next book I read was another two star. I've read so many two stars. I feel like all the books that I've talked about so far on this video has been two stars. But this is actually an extremely unpopular opinion. So don't take my word for it because I am not the popular opinion with this one. I think this was like the most popular romance book of last year and everyone loved it. And I'm over here like, I don't understand the hype. But it is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. So I don't know if it was just the book. I don't know if it's Emily Henry's writing style, but I thought this book was so flipping boring. And for some reason, this love interest, Charlie, felt like a fever dream of a character. Like he didn't feel like a character. Like I felt like I was reading Charlie like at the beginning of the book and he seemed like a completely different character to who he was like at the end. And I kind of felt like the entire time I'm like, why do I have literally zero, none, like zip? feelings for Charlie. He just doesn't even feel like a main character to the story. Like every time he'd pop in and like be with like our main character, what's her name? Nora. It just felt like, I'm like, I don't care about you. Like, I don't, who, who are you? I don't know. And I don't know if I'm going to read any more of Emily Henry's book work because I know she writes a lot of her books very similarly to where there's like a love interest and like a romance going on. But then there's a huge, huge other plot line. And don't get me wrong, I do like that usually. But for some reason with this one, it just felt like what was the point of the romance? Like we should have just focused on the sisters like and I kind of felt like the sister bond kind of bothered me. They were extremely codependent. Her sister was like really annoying to me because she was so she was kind of selfish I think and then Nora was like explained to being like this like shark and like this intense shark like personality where they're just like what's the word? I can't think of any words right now. And that's what the author was telling us that she was, but she didn't have any of those personality traits throughout the entire story as you were reading. Like she seemed very nice. She was super nice to all of her clients. She was really nice to her sister and like her shark behavior and her aggressive assertive behavior that she was said to have, she literally didn't have. And I was like, what the heck? I don't understand like where this is coming from. And I'm not saying that it was a bad book by any means. In fact, I absolutely love Emily Henry's humor. That was one thing that I really noticed while I was reading this was that she was like the funniest writer ever. And I thought she was hilarious in so many parts. In fact, a lot of what I tabbed are parts that I laughed out loud. Like I think that Emily Henry is genuinely a witty author. Sadly, I gave this two stars. I really wanted to give it at least three, but by the end of the book, it was one of those things where I just couldn't wait to be done with it because I was just so bored and I was just kind of like skimming it and I didn't really feel anything. So just not super happy with it. So the next book that I read was Lisa Jules, Then She Was Gone. So this book was a five star thriller for me. Now it's really rare that I give thrillers five stars. I just feel like thrillers have to like bring something a little bit extra for it to be five stars. And a lot of thrillers don't, they're just thrillers, which there's nothing wrong with that. I do like just a good basic thriller. But this one brought something extra that most thrillers don't bring and it was emotion. And it was like this whole like subplot of like motherhood for like mothers. And it was so good because by the end I was just like almost crying at certain parts because it was just like so, it was just thought provoking I think at the end, like how she decided to wrap it up and it was just really, really good in that regard. It definitely brought that extra emotion that most thrillers don't bring if that makes sense. So that's why I really, really love this. Um, so this is basically about a woman whose daughter goes missing one day and she's never found, they never find her. So then one day she goes to this coffee shop and she meets this man and they start talking and they exchange numbers and they start dating each other. And then she goes to his house one day and she meets his daughter and his daughter looks exactly like 
her daughter that went missing and they just have so many similarities and she's just like what the heck this is so weird and it goes in so many interesting directions and it's kind of a more thought-provoking thriller I feel like and I won't say this is necessarily thrilling it's just interesting and I thought this was amazing I gave this five stars it was so good so the next book I read was My Lobotomy by Howard Dully so this one was also part of my TBR video and this one was really good so I really love memoirs obviously I've talked about that before and this one really was great as well the only thing that this one had in it that I hate and I mentioned this in my memoir video is when memoirs have to like set up for the story right and it's necessary like you have to have that set up to make the story work because you need some of those details but it's kind of boring because that's not really what you want to know about you want to know about his lobotomy not his childhood but with this book, there was a big, big, big chunk at the beginning where he was talking about his childhood and how his stepmother was basically extremely abusive to him. And it was needed because I think that that's a huge aspect of the story because she's the one that decided that he needed to get a lobotomy. But um, I can say that the beginning was a little bit drawn out and a little bit boring because I was just kind of like, okay, like I want to get to the lobotomy and like why you got it and all that kind of thing. So this book did have a pretty chunky, hefty setup. But once that setup was over and once you kind of got into the nitty gritty, like it was super, super interesting. His life story was so fascinating. Like you saw his struggles and, you know, his feelings about his lobotomy, not ever knowing why he got one, why his parents thought he needed one. And it was actually pretty fascinating. I'm not going to lie. And you also find out why his lobotomy didn't affect him like it affected a lot of other people that got them at that time because a lot of people were just really curious because they're like you don't seem like you got a lobotomy and it's kind of explains why it didn't affect him as much so that was really interesting as well so I really like this book and if you're interested in this kind of thing and you're interested in memoirs in general then I think that you're really gonna like this just be aware that the beginning can get a little sluggish but after that it's pretty interesting. I gave this four stars. So the next book that I read I no longer have because I actually gave it to my cousin because I finished it in like a day or two and it was that little tiny book called Petrified Woman by Jeremy Ray. So I really wanted to read this because I knew it wouldn't take me very long to read and I gave this book, I'm pretty sure I gave this book five stars. Let me see. Yes I did. So the reason I gave this book five stars is because I really appreciate it when authors are aware that they don't need to overwork a story, right? Like sometimes I feel like authors are like, ooh, they come up with a really good storyline and then they're like, I need to make like a whole entire novel about this storyline that I've created. And so they like overwork it to where it's like a 350 page book when it does not have to be a 350 page book. And Jeremy Ray knew that he had a really good synopsis and a really good idea but he didn't need to make it like this full-blown novel. He's like, I can make this a short book and it's going to be really good. And it was because he gave you details. He gave you an understanding of her, the girl's past and he knew he could do it in a short amount of time, but still make it a really good book. So this book is basically about a girl who meets this new boyfriend and she really, really likes this boyfriend. But her friend is like, I don't know about this guy. Like he seems a little bit sketchy, seems a little bit weird. The thing that the friend doesn't really like about him is that he plays really, really weird pranks. Like he's a prankster. And she's just like, it's weird that he likes pranks so much. Like some of his pranks have been kind of mean. And so one day the girl decides that she wants to pull a prank on him. And so she like creates this elaborate prank. And while she's trying to pull this prank, she realizes something really, really, really dark about this boyfriend that she has. Um, but what's interesting about this is it actually has a little bit of like a magical realism aspect to it and the way that it all wrapped up and kind of came together with that magical realism element was actually really interesting. I really really love that. I highly recommend this if you're looking for something really short really quick like if you're trying to get your um, reading goal numbers up a little bit or you're falling behind a little bit this is a great one. You definitely don't need to buy it physically though. Anyways that is it for this video you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video and if you have any questions about any of these books don't hesitate to comment down below and I'll try my best to answer them and let me know what the best book that you have read recently was or like the last book that you read was like a five star. I'd be very very curious and yeah I think that's it guys so I will see you in my next video and I will talk to you soon. Bye!